how can you increase the protein level and the test weight in your crop? Well, this isn't super easy, but there are a few steps we can talk to you about that hopefully will help you on your farm. One of the things that I've learned, Brian, over all my years as an agronomist, as I travel around the world talking with agronomists and talking to great farmers, when they have a problem in their crop, they start looking at, all right, let's look at all the essential nutrients and let's see what functions they play in the plant. And then let's look at what parts of my farm I don't have that problem in at all and see what nutrients are high in those areas. And what we see as you look through all the functions of nutrients, yeah, we look at protein building and test weight and those kinds of things, and certainly think about nitrogen and sulfur, but there are a lot of micronutrients that come into play and secondary nutrients as well. So taking good soil samples and pulling plant tissue analysis through the growing season are two tools that are being underutilized in terms of figuring out some of these problems like test weight and like protein. All right, I wanna take this one step further. You have all the data you need on your farm, probably already. If you've been doing soil tests and if you have a yield monitor on your combine, you need to marry up those two things. We've done that on our farm the last two years on over 2,000 grid points each year. And here's what I can tell you. When you start comparing the soil test results versus the yield results, you start to figure out very, very quickly what's going to make a difference in terms of yield. But also, you could take that a step further and take a look at test weight, because hopefully you're able to measure test weight. And if you wanted to, you could take some samples in each one of these spots on your farm. Maybe it is only 10 or 20 or something like that. But if you go right to grid points, you take some of that grain right at that grid point for the soil test and send it in for protein analysis. Well, now you would be able to compare protein with what's the fertility in my field at that point. All right, now let's just start with a couple of easy ones here, nitrogen and sulfur. Both are leachable nutrients, and when we're talking about test weight and protein levels, a lot of that comes down to having those two big pieces in place late in the season as your plant needs them. So you've got to look at your fertility program and say, okay, when does my nitrogen go on? When does my sulfur go on? And if the answer is, well, I put those on last fall, and in the summer, I want to try and make test weight and protein, well, chances are you're probably not maxing what your crop could do. Now, if you said, well, I don't put them on in the fall, but I do put them all on at planting time in the spring, that too can be a challenge, especially if you have a year like 2019 was for many growing areas where we just had way too much rainfall. So getting those applications made closer to the time where the crop is going to use them certainly has some merit. Maybe. And this is the whole thing. There's no one right answer in agriculture. It all depends on your environment. Uh, let's talk very specifically here about a crop. Let's take wheat. I get calls every year from lots of farmers saying, my protein levels are bad. How do I increase protein levels? By far and away, the number one thing is having available nitrogen late in the season for that wheat crop. Now, Darren made the comment about apply it more toward when it's needed. Well, that's all fine to say, but what if you don't get any rain? What if you top dressed it and don't get any rain? Then it's not going to work. So I agree that we, a lot of times, will say apply it a little bit later, but we have to be real careful about saying that to everybody. So if in your situation you don't control the moisture, so in other words you don't have irrigation, and you are strictly counting on Mother Nature to give you rainfall, you have to look at, well, when do I normally get the rain? How much rain do I get? And now you're starting to gamble a little bit with, I want to get it on early enough so I get rain, but I don't want to put all my eggs into that one basket either. I would also say this because you might say, well, I never put nitrogen on late. I don't even put all that much nitrogen on. My protein levels are high. Don't forget, your soil produces its own nitrogen. How it does that is by mineralizing soil organic matter. And if you have lots of organic matter in your soil, then you will get lots of nitrogen out of there for free every year. In the Midwestern United States, we usually figure 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen for every 1% of organic matter. So if you have 5% organic matter, that's 100 to 150 pounds of nitrogen you get for free every year. So having good soil health is basically what you're saying, Brad. If we got good soil health, we can get good mineralization. The other thing is sunlight. Here's another thing that costs you nothing. The sun is going to shine some days, we hope. How do you maximize what sunlight your plants are going to capture? Well, keeping leaves clean, like we talk about protecting the flag leaf or protecting the ear leaf in corn. 
These are really important because now we can catch more sunlight and that's going to result in more yield, more protein, more test weight. All those things will be good if we can capture that sunlight. And then the final piece of that is good nutrient balance. We've got to keep that plant healthy and alive as long as we possibly can. If we run short of any essential nutrient, including the micronutrients, we're not going to maximize what we're doing out in the field. When it comes to test weight, there are a couple of things I think about. Number one is planting the right maturity for your area. If you get a frost prior to when that plant gets finished, when like the corn gets to black layer or the soybeans are fully developed, well then of course you're going to have lower test weight, so that's huge. But the second thing is really the fertility side, and for us on our farm, that was potassium. Now phosphorus, super important also, but potassium, ridiculously important. You want your levels at least 4% base saturation K, and for big time yields and big time test weight, I'd say you need to be in the 6 to 8% base saturation K range. Also Darren mentioned micronutrients zinc, manganese, iron, copper, boron. Make sure you have not just levels there, but good levels. And if you're going to build your P and K up to really high levels, well guess what? Your micronutrients need to be at really high levels as well. Well there's a lot of information there about building test weight, building proteins, Ultimately, it's going to help your yield overall too. Getting that nutrient balance right, getting the nutrients there at the right time for your plants too so they can utilize them. That will put the building blocks in place for a great crop this next season. But one other thing you'll definitely need to have if you want to have good crops is control of our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up later in the show.